Okay, so we're going to do a relatively short lesson on the economic term of factors of production. And what we really just mean by the, the term factors of production are the things that are used to produce things, the things that are used to make things. So in your study guide, you'd want to go on the second page right after opportunity cost and fill in that first vocabulary box with uh, the words factors of production and here's the uh, definition for your sh for your worksheet productive resources used to produce goods and services that's what you put in your study guide don't forget to create a memory icon in that third box now uh, the factors of production meaning that the, the resources used to produce something, a good or a service, uh, can be broken up into three broad categories. Um, oh, so, sorry, here in the States we, we do four categories, I always forget. Uh, land is the nickname, or which is the nickname for natural resources. Uh, labor, which is the nickname for human resources. Capital, which is short for capital resources. And then in, here in the United States, uh, we also put entrepreneurship as a fourth category of the factors of production. Other countries, they tend to put entrepreneurship in the labor uh, category, but uh, here in the U.S. we tend to think of it as a separate one, so uh, that's the way I'll teach it. Uh, so let's start with uh, land or natural resources. Again, you want to make sure that you've got this in your study guide. Um, so it's defined as the raw materials supplied by nature which are used to produce goods or services or go goods and services uh, some examples uh, include uh, now here it's a bit tricky. Some of these examples are really good examples, and some of these examples aren't the best, and, and I'll explain as we go along. Uh, some good examples to put on your sheet would be chicken, whereas meat is something different. Meat has been processed, so really meat is a intermediate good, and we'll get to that later on. But chicken is, is definitely a natural resource. Uh, vegetables, definitely a natural resource. Uh, spices, it depends on what form it's in. Now water is another tricky thing that could be considered an intermediate good and we'll, we'll, we'll get to that later on. But if you want to put in your sheet some good examples, chicken, vegetables, uh, those are those are good ones. If we're talking about something besides chicken noodle soup, you could put something like trees, uh, and then land itself. Land is, is a natural resource. Um, so uh, you could put, you know, things like uh, raw, raw materials like iron ore, you know, iron before it's been smelted, before it's been uh, developed. Uh, next, human resources, nicknamed labor. That goes in your study guide. So that's any human effort, whether mental or physical, used in the production process, meaning any skill, uh, any skill that's used, any physical action that's used, uh, any expertise that's used, any managerial expertise that's used in order to produce a good or service. And so some examples would be um, the, the actions that farmers do to raise the animals to make soup, uh, the, the, the skill a truck driver has in order to drive animals or, or, or meat to a factory, uh, the, the know-how that workers have to operate machinery or the actual action uh, that workers use to operate machinery, um, the, the work that managers do, uh, all those sorts of things are examples, and you can put that in your study guide, of what we consider to be labor. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, so the know-how. It's not just about the, the physical labor, it's also about the know-how. All right, and then uh, another c category of the factors of production, meaning the things that are used to produce um, things, 
uh, is capital resources. Now, a capital resource is a man-made item or processed item that is used to produce other goods and services. Okay, so man-made. Oh, if you have a highlighter, highlight it because this is really the thing that's going to help you understand what capital resources are. Uh, they've got to be man-made. They've man-made, but they're a man-made thing to make other things. Um, however, uh, specific capital resources. <clears throat> there's there's something else that we're going to be comparing with capital resources. Uh, that makes makes this a bit tricky, but we'll, we'll come back to that in a second. So, capital resources can be broken up into two subcategories. One is physical capital, and again, those are the man-made, as we've said before, tools, machines, buildings, and process materials used to produce a good and service uh, um, uh, that is not, and now here's the thing that should be in your study guide that isn't, and I strongly advise, uh, that you put it somewhere in the margin because there's actually a picture in your memory icon that is inappropriate and we need to exit out. So add to that definition for uh, physical capital, um, add to that definition these, after good or service that is not consumed in the production of one additional unit. That is really important. So, for example, if we can take a look at this, this imagery here. If you're making clothes, right, you have material here and you have scissors. Now, which of these two will not be consumed when you make one shirt? Okay, so in the production of one additional unit, which of those things will not be used up when you make one shirt? So, fabric will be used up. You'll, there will be a specific amount of fabric that is used up when you make one shirt. However, your scissors, yeah, maybe after 2,000 shirts you're going to have to get new scissors, but in making one shirt, this thing is not going to get used up. So this, the scissors, is what we would put in the category of physical capital, and the fabric is something uh, we're going to talk in, in the next few slides, is going to fall in the category of intermediate goods. And so um, fabric is not a, what we would call capital. It's an intermediate good. So on your study guide, you need to find that image of the fabric and put a big X on it. That's not going to get used up when you make one shirt. Uh, paintbrush and paint bucket, if you paint a house, are, are those two things going to get necessarily used up when you paint one house or one room? It, does that mean that it's a physical, excuse me, capital or something else? So the paintbrush, the paint bucket, this is capital, whereas the paint inside it, it is getting used up as you paint the room. So you're using a certain amount of paint to paint the room, and so that's not, a, that's not capital, that's an intermediate good. And we'll get to that a little bit later. Okay, truck is used, so a truck would be an example. This is something you could put in your study guide as an example of um, a capital good, a truck. The computer, your Chromebook that you're using right now, is capital. It's the capital that's used to produce your education. Um, the, the lights in the classroom, all of the man-made items in the classroom that are used, in fact, the chair that you're sitting on is capital. It's capital that's used to produce your education. That's the service that we're producing with the chair that you're sitting on. And so those are all considered capital. Now the paper in that you're using, that's a, that's a whole different thing. That worksheet that you're working on, that is not a capital resource. Yes, it's, a, it's something that's used to produce your education, but you're using it up right now while you're writing. And so that is considered an intermediate good, and we'll get to that in a second. And then also we have this thing called financial capital, and that's the money needed to produce a good or service. And return the page. Now, 
Intermediate goods. I accidentally forgot to put it in the study guide. So you're going to need to turn to the back page um, if you're a 2020, fall 2020 student. If you're, if you're anyone after that, then I've already put it in the, the new study guide. Uh, but those of you who are uh, spring, excuse me, spring 2020 students, uh, you'll need to go to the back and put intermediate goods in one of the blank uh, rows. So an intermediate good is a man-made or processed good, uh, man-made or processed goods which are consumed in the process of production. So get that in there in your study guide. You could draw, um, well, some of these are intermediate goods and some of them are not. So is this going to, if you are a chef, imagine you're a chef um, and you want to produce omelets to sell to customers. Which of the goods pictured below will be consumed by making one omelet. For example, this pan or these eggs, cheese, milk, which of those would be consumed by making one omelet? Okay. And of course it's the, the cheese, the egg, uh, the butter, the milk that's going to be consumed, not the pan nor the milk pitcher that won't be consumed either. Uh, next example, again, while you're making omelet, which of these two will be consumed? Uh, the stove, will it be consumed when you make one omelet? Or will electricity be consumed when you make one omelet? Uh, so the electricity is what's being consumed by making one omelet. So that is that electricity is the intermediate good. The stove is a capital good. The cheese, the eggs, the milk, that is a what kind of good? It's an intermediate good, whereas the pan is a what kind of good? It's a capital good. So that... Let's take a oh, and then finally, before we do some uh, quizzing on those topics, entrepreneurship. This is in, in the U.S. our fourth factor of production, meaning uh, resources used to produce goods or services. Um, this is a factor of production that sometimes uh, ties the others together. Entrepreneurship, and this goes in your study guide, uh, is, uh, you'll have to go back to the main portion of your study guide. The activity of setting up a new business or venture, taking on financial risks, and that risk is important to take, it's the person who's taking that financial risk and, and came up with the idea and is pushing through with the idea, uh, in the hope of profit. That's entrepreneurship. Okay, so a manager or a CEO isn't necessarily an entrepreneur. The person who started the business uh, is the entrepreneur. For example, uh, Apple, uh, the entrepreneur was Steve Jobs. He took the financial risk. He took the professional risks to start the Apple Corporation. Uh, I don't know who the CEO of Apple is right now, but it's not Steve Jobs because he has uh, unfortunately passed away. And so the person now is not necessarily an entrepreneur. They are simply a manager of, of people. So these are uh, two separate uh, issues. Uh, some examples, someone took the financial risk of starting the soup business without any guarantee that he or she wouldn't fail and go bankrupt. That's the entrepreneur. And 85% of new businesses fail within the first, I think, I don't think within the first year, but within the first five years. It's a huge risk to start a business. Uh, so they're the ones that are trying to get a reward or a profit and, and the rest of us benefit in the process. So let's, let's do some quizzes before you, or quizzing before you move on to your worksheet. Uh, when producing a garden, seeds, are they capital resource or an intermediate good? When producing a garden, is a shovel or trowel a capital resource or an in intermediate good? When producing a garden, is the trailer that you carry all the materials on to your garden, trees, cement, whatever you need, 
capital resource or intermediate good. When uh, using fertilizer in your garden, uh, this garden business, is that a capital resource or intermediate good? Now, I should have clarified, we're talking about um, producing a garden for profit. If you're just doing this for the fun of it, that's, that's not a business you're not producing necessarily uh, for profit, and then that's a whole different conversation. Uh, what about the gardeners that are hired to work in the garden? Which factor of production is that? Land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship, or is that an intermediate good? The person who decided to make money by starting this landscaping business is that land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship, or intermediate good. The field uh, that the entrepreneur chose to start the garden on, which factor of production? The overseer of the gardeners, which factor of production? The tractor that is used in the garden. Which factor of production? Now, water is a tricky business. It depends on what kind of water you're talking about. Uh, if we're talking about water that is just from a untreated water, say in an irrigation ditch, and the irrigation ditch is untreated water, or water from a well that is untreated water, then which factor of production would that be? Okay. Now, if it is the water that we get out of our faucets here at school or at home, when you're watering uh, your lawn at home, that is treated water. That, wa that water has been processed to the point that it is drinkable water, even the water we pour out in our gardens. And so, which factor of production is that? Okay, so that now you're ready to start on the worksheets that are provided for you. Good luck!